Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Octopus Builds. My name is Bob Walker, and I am the Technical Director of Customer Success here at Octopus Deploy, and we are building out the Trident project for the fictional Octo Pet Shop company. Now let's look at what we did in the previous episode. So in the previous episode, we added in the ability to do rolling deployments. So we are gonna remove something from a load balancer, then we're going to deploy it to, to then deploy it, and then we'll add it back in the load, to the load balancer. We also uh, restricted these steps to only run in staging and production because we only have a load balancer in staging and production. So let's talk a little bit about what the next steps are going to be. Now, I've been talking to the Trident team, and they came back with this. They love the email notifications. However, some of the developers indicated they really wanted to have the ability to get a Slack notification as well, because sometimes they have Slack open, but they don't have their email uh, application open, and they want to be able to respond to any sort of problems uh, rather quickly. But they only want that to fire when an error occurs. So let's go ahead and let's add in some Slack notifications into our deployment process. Now. First, let's take a look at our email notifications. Now, our email notifications, we have a subject with a body already predefined, sorry, me, <laughs> a subject that with a text already predefined, and same thing with the body, where we already have this predefined. And I could just create a Slack step and copy and paste everything over, but I'm not really a big fan of that. I don't want to do that. I'd rather have the ability to go in and reuse this text in, in, other, in other steps. Now, taking this a step further, it's fairly common when we're talking with various users that they want to kind of have a standard way of sending out these notifications, specifically say subject and body, because they don't want to have to reinvent the wheel every single time, especially trying to come up with the appropriate messaging and the appropriate format. And it can get rather annoying rather quickly. So what we're going to do first, before we do anything, is we're going to come over to our library. I'm going to open up a new tab. Now, we haven't spent a whole lot of time in our library, but let's talk a little bit about it. We have the ability to share a number of different things between projects. Uh, so uh, certificates, are, if you're fairly, uh, fairly straightforward, you can add in a HTTPS or SSL or TLS certificate here. Uh, you can share script modules. We'll get into that later. Uh, step templates, which we're going to be covering pretty soon, and variable sets. And so let's talk a little bit about variable sets because that's what we're going to be using today. So variable sets are a way that we can share variables between projects. Now the interesting thing is is that uh, a lot of folks when they get started out they like to just go global uh, as the variable names uh, the name of the variable set or they'll use main or shared or anything in between. I really don't like that because Anytime you have the word global or main or shared, that just turns into a junk drawer of all the possibilities that are out there. And everyone starts dumping variables in there. And, and very quickly, the variable set will become very unwieldy. And you'll be including variables in there that's not going to be useful for everybody. I much rather have a set of many variable sets as opposed to having one massive single variable set. And what I'll do is I'm going to call this notification, if I can spell correctly. And so I also like to add in a description. Hopefully it's fairly simple, but it's going to have something like I don't like that to send a So the description is just a nice way to let people know what it's here for. Uh, you don't have to have a description. All you really need is a name. But once you click on save, now let's come in here. Now with variable set variables, it can be very easy to just say, I just want to have subject. And then we can add to this to the list. And I, I just want a body. And it, that would work. Um, there's nothing that's preventing you from doing that. However, it doesn't add a lot of context as to where this variable is coming from. And when you look at the, all the possible variables that are in Octopus Deploy, you, you risk the possibility of name collision. So I have my variable set name here, 
If I were to come over here to my project and I were to add something very similar where I'd add subject as one of my variable names, then what we have is a name collision. And a name collision is a bad thing because then Octopus Deploy has to determine what variable value to pick from. Uh, so it, by default, when it sees a variable set has the same variable name as a project, the project will win out. And it has a whole set of rules, but generally the project is always going to be the one that wins. So we don't want to do something like that. We don't want to have the possibility of name collisions because it's just, it's annoying. You don't know what's going to happen and this just ends up causing more headaches than it's worth. So what I like to do is I just like to namespace my variables, very similar to what I did over my project variables, where I called it project.database.server.name. I'm just going to call this notification.subject.text. And I'm going to do the same thing with the body. And I want to use the same notification text for both the email as well as Slack. So let's jump back into my process. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and discard those changes. I don't care. And let's start copying. So that was the subject. And then I want to copy over the, it's the body. Now I do want to add in a Slack webhook email, uh, a URL that I can post to. Um, I don't want to share this with the entire world. So what I'm going to do is I have this over on another screen, um, which you can see Visual Studio Code. You can see all the, all the fun stuff over here that I have open in Visual Studio Code. And I'm just going to copy this in here. And let's call it a variable. So I'm going to call this notification.slack.webhook.url. So this will provide the, the webhook that I can then save, uh, that I can then use to post messages to uh, anybody. So let's go ahead and click on save. Awesome. Go away. Last pass. Don't need you. So we've created our variable set. Now we need to add that to our project. And the way that we do that is you come over to variables and then you click on library sets and you click on include library sets. We only have one. Um, if we had a whole bunch of them, uh, you'd want to filter them out because it's probably going to be kind of a pain to find it unless you do. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on notification and you can even see the variables that are going to be included in here. So that's great. Now we have the variable set included. So what we're going to want to do first is let's update the email step. And the email step, uh, we just want to replace all of that text with just notification subject.txt. Very easy. And what I also like about this namespace of calling it notification.subject.txt, now that I know that there is a library variable set called notification, it's going to be fairly simple for me to figure out where in the world is this variable coming from. If you just have a generic name such as body or subject, we have no idea where that's coming from. And then you have to kind of do a little bit of spelunking through Octopus. And you can find it eventually. Um, I'll show you how to find it in just a quick second after I add in the Slack notification. But you can eventually find where those variables are coming from. But why go through that extra burden and add that additional psychological weight? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what I'm going to do is I want to just send out a Slack message. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be using our community step templates. So let me back up really quick. We have a number of built-in steps within Octopus Deploy. Uh, these are all the steps that are included with Octopus Deploy out of the box. That's quite a bit. That's... But it doesn't cover every possible scenario, every possible integration, every possible permutation that you can possibly think of. So let's add in the community steps and this shows you all the possible community steps that are out there so we have 500 community steps at the time of this recording and it includes a whole slew of things anywhere from uh, Linux integration scroll back up we can register a Linux tentacle stop and restart a service to going through and you can have things such as I think we I think I saw flyway in there yep if you want to do flyaway deployments, we have we've added support in for that. So uh, you're going to be, kind of be wondering where these community step templates come from. A lot of them are written by the community, but at the same time, a lot of them are also written by Octopus Deploy employees. Because as we come across different things, we're like, oh, it'd be really nice if we could do this, or we're working on an 
uh, trying to solve a problem for somebody and we just added that in there or we were working with a customer and they they mentioned something like oh that's a really good idea uh, so the every one of the community steps they have to go through an approval process before they're added into the community where we'll review a set of rules to make sure that uh, you're not going to say post all the, someone's credentials out to some random server or something along those lines. Uh, anything like that will stick out like a sore thumb, especially if all this is supposed to do is, uh, say, do a, a flyaway migration. <laughs> if it says, you know, hey, call out to this REST API, it, you may, what in the world's going on over here? But I'm kind of digressing a little bit. Let's jump over and let's jump into Slack because that's what we want to do. And we just want to send a simple notification. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on install and add. I'll get a notification asking me if I want to do that. And I only want to run this on a worker. So I'm going to say send Slack message on failure. Now hosted Windows is fine. So I need a webhook URL. And so I'll do this. And that's where that sensitive variable comes from the channel handle so where do I want to deploy this to so I have a channel already set up for this deployment notifications uh, you can provide your own icon or we have just a general generic icon uh, octopus deploy you can provide whatever user you want so I could even say trident project in octopus deploy and the title is very similar to the message so let's sorry excuse me very similar to the subject, my lord. Um, and then the message itself is similar to the body. And you can even color the message. So in this particular case, if there's an error, I just want to color this red. Now, again, with with Octopus Deploy having the ability, if you recall in an earlier episode where we went in and we added in some if-then statements to, specifically to our subject. So let's take a look at that really quick. If Octopus Deploy has error, we can say it's failed or it's completed successfully. What we can do if, if we wanted to, we could also change the color based on some sort of uh, our own internal business logic. So if it's failed, make it red. If it's successful, make it green. But because we're only going to be doing failures, let's go ahead and change this to failure and save this. So now we have a step that will notify us if there's going to be a problem. Now, I want to be able to test this and make sure that everything is working. So sometimes I do this. I really don't like doing it. Uh, <laughs> how do you prove a, a failure is going to work? You can cause a failure to happen just by exiting with a non-zero exit code. So every time a script run, every time an application run, anytime something runs on your computer and it finishes running, it's going to have an exit code. And an exit code of zero is the commonly accepted exit code where it will tell, hey, everything was working correctly. Now, there's some rules and caveats to that, but this is just a code that the program tells the operating system that something has happened. Now, with a script, we can just have an exit code of one, and that tells Octopus Deploy that something happened. Um, and it's a very simple thing, simple thing to do. Um, I'm also going to change this to run on development. I only want to do this temporarily. Um, again, I just want to make sure that everything is working perfectly on, on this. So let's go ahead. We've got to create a new release. Again, because we are snapshotting the deployment process as well as the variables. So we added a new variable set. We added a new deployment process step. We changed the existing one. Um, so we definitely need to create a whole new one. And we snapshot uh, that, that deployment process. So I've created the variable. Excuse me, I created the release. And let's go ahead and deploy this up to development. Now while we're waiting you might be wondering man that's a lot of clicking that you have to go around. Generally the vast majority of releases are created by build server integrations. Um, they're not created by people manually. Uh, that's more atypical than typical. Uh, build server integrations which we'll get into in a, a future episode will automatically create the release for you and typically automatically deploy it to dev uh, or a lower environment or to a testing environment. Uh, it's not until you're ready to start promoting releases up to, say, test or staging or production, then uh, you'll go into the user interface. And at that time, you're typically going to be promoting a handful of releases at any given point in time. So while you do, do see me click around a lot, uh, 
especially on the release creation bits, that's only because I'm going through this whole exercise of creating a, a new release and um, making sure that everything's going to work uh, with this updated deployment process. And that's fairly common as you're building out your deployment process, as you get feedback. Uh, no deployment process I found uh, stands still. <laughs> I'm starting just to kill time just while well, I'm waiting for my uh, dynamic worker to finish acquiring any sort of things but uh, yeah your a deployment process I would say very rarely stands still for more than a, a, oh gosh uh, at the very beginning at the very beginning of a project it's going to be changing quite significantly unless you have a, a kind of a an established way that you deploy something within octopus deploy but if it's a new project using new technology you're, you're going to be uh, rolling through a number of different iterations as you kind of find out how to do various things. There we go. It's starting to do this. And so this should go ahead and trigger an error. It did. And so we got an email notification and then now it's going to send a Slack message. And I will bring my Slack over into the screen ever so quickly. So let's see if we can get that to work just fine. All right. And let's get this so we can see that the Slack message was sent in. And if I wanted to, if I clicked on this, it would send me back to this message, very similar to what we had before. So awesome, the Slack process is working. Let's go ahead and we want to prevent that. <laughs> we want to undo some of those changes. That was just for testing purposes. And again, I really don't like doing that unless it's absolutely necessary in this particular case. Uh, yeah, I think it was fairly necessary. What I'm most likely going to do is now that I know it works, I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to delete this release. I don't want this to be out there anymore. Uh, the other thing I could do is come in here and prevent the progression. What that will do is say this was a, I'll just do that. This was a test release for a new process. Now in the future, when we get into config as code, I can show you how to do this on a branch that's not part of the main deployment process, but that's for a future episode. Um, but now we have updated our existing release, excuse me, our existing deployment process, and let's just create a new release just to make sure everything is working as we expect it to work. And hopefully it should go a heck of a lot faster because I have everything already leased and ready to go. Um, I won't be sitting here killing a bunch of time uh, waiting for the worker lease to get acquired on the dynamic worker. Perfect. It already got it. Everything has been downloaded and extracted. Happy days. So deploy the Trident website. And this time we did not send a Slack notification message because there was no error. So everything is working as I expect it to work. And that's how you add in Slack notifications. And that's how you create a variable set. And that is how uh, you change around your deployment process to leverage the variable set. The one last thing before I leave, in case you're wondering where to find where variables come from, there's a few spots within the UI you can do that. So I mentioned that, you know, if you had a variable named subject, how would you find where that variable is coming from? If you come in here and go to variables all, I can type, I can search by text and there is where I will find me. Give me the name of the variable, what the value is as well as any sort of scoping and where it is found. So it is, possible to find it. I just don't like having to come here. Uh, I'll be honest, I'd rather know where the, these values are coming from just by looking at the deployment process go, oh, it doesn't say project, it says something else. I know I need to come to my library variable sets, go to notification and make my changes here. So that's it for today. And join me next week for the next episode of Octopus Builds. As always, if you have any suggestions on what I should be building up next in my deployment process, please send them over. I'm always happy to uh, adjust my plans. So, thank you very much and have a great rest of your day.